Welcome to lesson number two on navigation brought to you by Team Blue Heaven. Uh, on the last lesson we looked about the uh, very, very basics of uh, navigation, i.e. the map itself. And this lesson we're going to move on to uh, talking about certain type of features and how we can use those features to help orientate and navigate across the land. So in this lesson we're going to talk about identifying linear features using a feature as a handrail to maintain position and help us navigate along our chosen route. And we'll also look at using linear features to help orientate the map. And by way of orientating the map I mean getting the map to represent the features and the lay of the land around you. So what you see on the map and the items and the features that you see on the map are in exactly the same position when you look around you as what they are on the map. And we'll also look at what is a catching and a collecting feature. And we'll bring all that together whereby we'll be utilising linear features as handrails, collecting features and catching features along our route, and also introducing the process called aiming off. So what is a linear feature? A linear feature is a line on a map, basically, that's what it is. Now that line may well be a fence, a wall, a road, a track, a river, a train line, whatever, but it's a feature that is a line and it's, it is a feature that you can use in a process of what's called handrailing, whereby you can literally handrail along that feature to enable you to get to your desired destination. But why are linear features important? Well, for two reasons. One, they enable you to locate your position on a map and also orientate that map correctly so the map is orientated towards the features on the ground, i.e. your linear feature. And two, as I previously mentioned, they will enable you to navigate from point to point along your map and along your route. So when I'm talking about orientating the map, we're talking about doing this in a more manual process, so we're not looking at using a compass. A compass isn't for this level of navigation. We start using the compass and we start training people on compass a little bit further on in their navigation journey. You as a navigator, certainly in uh, the early stages of navigation, should be able to orientate a map using the map itself and assuming it's not pitch black or it's a whiteout or it's foggy or you're in the middle of dense trees, you should be able to navigate the map using the features that are on the map in relation to what you see on the ground around you without resorting to a compass. The reason why this is important is that this is a very basic skill to be able to orientate a map without the use of a compass. That means when you're out on the ground and you are navigating you're not having to stop every two or three minutes, bring out the compass, go oh which way is north, orientate the map, okay right we're off in that direction. You're constantly adjusting the map and moving it as you're moving along various linear features that enable you to one progress along your route but also to dynamically orientate the map so the map is always a representation of the ground around you and that's a far more efficient and quicker way of navigating than walking along with a compass in one hand and your map in the other and trying to work like that you'll see a lot of navigators, a lot of good navigators will just be running along or walking along, a cy uh, probably not cycling, but walking along and hiking just with a map in hand. Yeah, okay, away you go. Walk a little bit further, map comes out. Yeah, away you go. Not always you will see them with a compass, map, ooh, away they go. If I see that in a navigator, especially in your in terrain, where you've got easily identifiable features, visibility is good, you're not in the middle of a forest, then I'm thinking, mm, okay, maybe their skills on navigation is not quite as good as it should be. So in that sense, compasses are, for later lessons, we're now looking at orientation from a manual point of view. In the age-old Blue Peter tradition, here is one I prepared earlier. My trusty whiteboard is now on my trusty map. Now, looking on this map, this very, very simple map, we have uh, grid squares made up as per our previous lesson on Eastings and Northings. Uh, we have various 
linear features. We have a road here, bridle way moving around. We have river with a tributary stream going into it and also a drainage channel draining into the actual river itself. So granted a very simplified map but nonetheless showing some important linear features. Now if I wanted to orientate this map to the ground around me, obviously this ground is not relating to that, but let's say I was in this area, what I would do with my map is using the map. I actually know already where I am in relation to this map and I am I'm on this uh, bend in the road here. And basically what I would do, I'd put the map late face down and orientate it so looking down that way I would see this road, looking up that way I would see the road and if I could see that in the distance I would see the Y junction going off to the right hand side. Looking beyond me I would then actually see the river and I would then see the trees to my right. And that in effect is it orientated. So once we've uh, orientated a map and we have an understanding of where our position is, I here, there, you know, wherever, then we can start navigating along our route. So if you imagine, uh, I am uh, where I said I was earlier on, on the bend in this road, and I'm looking to navigate uh, over to this point of the corner of the wooded area. So I would handrail along the road, coming to the junction between the road and the bridleway, handrail along the bridleway and down to that point. That would be instead of going literally from A to B in a direct line across open ground. Granted it is an oversimplified explanation of handrailing but you do use handrailing to actually get to a certain point. In another example, let's say I want to get to that particular footbridge there. Now again I'm at the uh, bend in the road. Now rather than go the very long way round following the road and the bridle way etc. I want to go across the actual river. Now I can see there is clearly defined drainage ditch that's leading into the river there. So what I can do, I can wander across the open ground. I know at some point as long as I stay true in my direction that I will, that I will hit that drainage ditch. I can then handrail all the way down to the river and then I can then follow the river up to the footbridge and get across the river. Granted I would hope that that drainage ditch isn't that deep and I can uh, jump across it and get to the other side of it and then handrail up to the, up to the side of the river. But it's using the linear features to, that will intersect across your route that you can pick them up, follow them down to a point that will enable you to get to your intended destination on the map and also on the ground. So it could be that we are travelling up the bridleway over the river, along to the road, and then off down to this house here at the bottom right corner of the map. So along that route, we, will, we know we will pass a footbridge. So that will be a collecting route. Check. We know we're going to come uh, go across on our left hand side, wooded area. Again, collecting feature. The track junction here the junction with the road and also to our left as we progress onto the road we have a Y junction within about half a K and that could be deemed a catching feature which I'll come back to in a minute and then we're heading down the road we're going to pass the track off here with the house at the end of the track and then on to our intended destination so collecting feature very large collecting feature collecting feature track junction, collecting feature hitting the actual road and as we pass the track leading to the house that is a collecting feature and then our final destination. Now a catching feature is something to stop you going too far off your route or too far away from your route. So if we use the same route again it could be that we have when we get to this junction there is always a chance that in very poor visibility or we're very tired and hungry we might take 
uh, the wrong direction. So we ended up going down the side of that track. And it could be, we think it's some continuation of this track because we have a wooded area on this side, on our left hand side, while we're heading along. The same with this one, we have wooded area on our left hand side and we're still heading along. However, we know that at no point are we going to come across a right hand turn on the wooded area. So that in itself could be a catching feature to tell us we have gone in the wrong direction down that route. Likewise, when we hit the road junction, we know there is a Y junction here, but there isn't one further down this way. So we do head off down that road instead of down that road and we come to a Y junction. We know we've gone in the wrong direction so we can about face and head back down our intended route. So a collecting feature is one that you collect along your route to help you know that you are still on your route and you're going the right direction. And a catching feature is literally what it's saying, it's to catch you, to stop you going further off your route. So you can turn around and get back on route. So now I want to touch on the process called aiming off. Now, we as human beings, uh, if we were to close our eyes and walk along a flat, safe surface with our eyes shut over a period of 100 meters, and we took note of where we started from, and we were aiming for a certain point, by the time we got to where we thought we would be, and we opened the eyes, we would have veered off left or right. Entirely natural because, as I said, we have a bias left or right. Why is this relevant in navigation? Well, if you're in uh, a period of really low visibility, incredibly dark, white out, fog, etc., or thick trees and what have you, you may well think you're traveling in a straight line from A to B. In actual fact, you won't be. So particularly in navigation, we developed a process called aiming off to compensate for this. So let's say, you're looking to navigate from this point here on the map down to this point just in the wooded area on the map. Now you know you're going to cross uh, the road and you're going to cross the bridleway into the wooded area. Now if you literally took a bearing from there to there and as I said it was poor visibility, what may happen even though you're wandering on a bearing because you can't walk 100% on a bearing, you would probably veer off and you might end up here or you might veer off to the right and end up here. Now the, the problem with that is that you won't know which side of your target point you are. So you might end up going that way to get to that corner to turn around and come back to get to the point that you want to step into the wooded area or you might end up going that way to get to that corner to turn back around again to end up into that wooded area. Now on this map that doesn't look that much of an issue but if it's late at night you're wet you're tired and the team's hungry you doing an extra k and a half uh, one way equates to three k's to back to the point that you need to be to end up getting to your checkpoint for example so what you want to do is cut down your errors as much as possible and what we would do we would we would aim off so we would so we know which side of that point we're going to land. So you would aim off and you would end up aiming off here so you know you would hit that track further along than where you need to be and then you literally go left down to there and then into the woods or you aim off at this point and you could aim off way off and come out here so you know you're, you're beyond the trees or the tree line, turn right past that track junction, head in and then head into the woods. So you might have initially gone a little bit further than going straight across, but you're reducing your margin of error to the point of probably zero. So that's aiming off is a very, very important uh, skill to learn when navigating, particularly in orienteering, but also if you're looking to get from checkpoint to checkpoint, such as what we find in adventure racing. So here is a quick video on everything that I've gone today just bringing things all together in a simple explanation of navigating across a route and understanding all of those processes. So here we have our map and on our map we have been given a number of checkpoints. Our start point is here. Checkpoint number one is here. Checkpoint two, checkpoint three, checkpoint four. 
Now we specified along our route a number of collecting and catching features. So number one, collecting feature. Number two, catching feature. And number three, catching feature. And we'll come back to those as we progress through our route. So we decide we will handrail along this track here to get to this junction here and then look to go straight across to our first checkpoint. But we know that we have a potential to veer off this direction or this direction and miss a checkpoint. If we veer off to our left it's not too bad because we can handrail along the fence and then head into our checkpoint. However, if we go to our right, we have potential confusion because we have a very similar track corner that would confuse us. So what we do is purposely aim off to our right, so we know we're going to hit this track along this length at some point, which means when we hit that, we know we go left, we hit the first track corner, veer around and into checkpoint 1. Moving along a route, we again handrail down the track, turn left and we come across our first collecting feature, which tells us we've taken the right direction when we hit this junction here moving along into checkpoint number two. Now checkpoint number two we have our first catching feature. Now this catching feature is around on this track junction here so that even if it was really dark or extremely poor visibility we might inadvertently take the wrong direction and head down this track here. We know then that if we came to a T-junction at the end of this track, we've actually gone in the wrong direction because the next junction we'd be looking for would be an entirely different track junction. So we head on, hand railing down to checkpoint number three. Now the task we've been given is to navigate across open land to our fourth and final checkpoint. Again, we know there is a risk that we could veer off here or veer off here. Now, if we end up here, we might think we are here. And therefore, we'd end up going in this direction into the town, which would be our catching feature to tell us that that we've actually gone the wrong way. However, if we end up here, we might think we're over here. And if that's the case, we'd up and actually going down this direction where we would hit another catching feature which would stop us and tell us to turn around and go back the other way. So what we would actually do is purposely aim off to our right and head straight across to the track, hitting it somewhere along this length here. Therefore we know the only direction we need to go when we hit that track is to our left into our fourth and final checkpoint. Bear in mind that we do have this catching feature just in case we did go right when we hit that track so at least we would then know that we could about face and head in the correct direction down to our fourth and final. So in summary a linear feature is a line of sort on a map that you can use to help navigate your way along a route and also 
certainly to help you orientate your map. A collecting feature is one that helps you identify that you are on the right route on your map. Whereas a catching feature is one that will stop you going too far off course or off of the route on your map. Aiming off is a process to enable you to hit your attack point, to stop you overrunning and also to stop you going off in the wrong direction. Now these are basic skills in navigation and all navigators need to be extremely comfortable with regards to linear features, handrails, collecting features, catching features and aiming off and especially using linear features to orientate the map and also to a certain point pinpoint your position on a map. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson, the second lesson in the series and I look forward to presenting to you on the third lesson. If you like what you see then please like and subscribe to this channel. If there are things that you would like added into the lessons and you would like to know more about then by all means please leave a comment below or indeed if you have anything to say about the videos or Team Blue Heaven then by all means please drop us a line or leave a comment in the comment section below and we'll come back to you. Thanks for watching and uh, enjoy your navigating.